Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Star Wars Clone Wars Retrospective. I'm the maintenance man, trust The now. maintenance man. Uh, I am 99. That's pretty much mine, isn't it? <laughs> what a different name. Oh boy, yeah, we got a lot to talk about today, ladies and gentlemen. Today I want to tell what the show is all about, because I'm going to close the door right now, because I forgot. Yes, ladies and gentlemen. dog and a child comes running in. <laughs> so, here we are, Clone Wars Retro. This show is basically me and Travis, I myself, have watched the Clone Wars many times. Travis has not, this is his first time going through. We are basically reviewing every episode of the Clone Wars Retro, episode 1, all the way to the last episode of season 6, in anticipation of season seven that Disney is bringing back on the streaming app, which is going to be fantastic. Do they officially count the lost episodes as a season? Yeah. They do now? Because I swear I've seen people say that this Clone Wars is coming back for a sixth season. I don't... Officially... Is this like the Boba Fett is Mandalorian? Mandalorian, Mandalorian thing. Yeah, officially, Google calls... It, or not officially. Google. Netflix lists as a season six. So I'm willing to take that as a season six. Because okay. they could have just put it as something else, but... Um, and it literally is a full season of episodes, essentially, so... The lost episodes, though. The lost episodes, yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, we're back. We're kicking off season three, so you can go back and listen to every one that we've done so far. Either if you're listening to this live, you can just subscribe to the feed on... Uh, well, it's all down below. We're pretty much everywhere you can think of in the interwebs. But if you want this early, if you're listening to the first few episodes, you can go to Patreon and get all of them uh, for a dollar and a half and five dollars, get all of them. So yeah, I got a lot of them up there. Can't remember what now at the time of this recording, there's, well, actually at the time of this recording, I never know because we're always, that's a weird thing out with Patreon. You know, it's, it's a thing that frustrates me. I can never know where we are in the world because I don't know who's subscribed to what and whatnot. But if you like what we do here, go there. There'll be more exclusives up there. So we're kicking off season three. Uh, Star Wars Clone Wars. This season is titled Secrets Revealed. Yes. Now I gotta, I gotta throw something out here. I, I made thumbnails and sent you thumbnails for this, right? No. No, I did. I did. No, you did not. Yeah, I swear I did. No, you've only sent me up to season two. No, no, no. I made a thumbnail because I changed the lightsaber color, mm -hmm. remember? And I made, I put, uh, I gave you a did cool for thumbnail. Season two, yeah. For season three. No, I made, uh, I put I put in a very cool thumbnail, uh, thumbnail. I remember this. So if you made one, it should still be, uh, it should be, um, what is it? In uh, your images. Well, not on the Dropbox, because I would have sent you an image saying, here's a teaser when I sent, remember? And it was like, you're like, oh, is it some clone trooper? I'm like, no, 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 it's a Jedi. Remember it was a Jedi sticking out and he's like against the fleet? I know I made one. I had to have. Mm, nope. Shit. So wouldn't it, it would still be in the Dropbox though? No, it would be actually in your images of our conversation. If you click on all the images, like click on photos in our conversation, it should show at the bottom list all the photos I've sent well, you. I'm not going to do that right now. <sighs> well, yes, we are. What is the episode we're on? One. We're kicking off season yeah, but you three. Said, you said the name though, the episode. No, no, no. The name of the season is Secrets Revealed. Secrets Revealed. There it is. Yeah. Lots of secrets. Is there? Yeah. <laughs> Great. Let's start with some of this stuff. Clone, we're reviewing the first four episodes of Clone Wars, by the way, season three. So if you want to pause and watch those and come back, you can. If you want to follow along, here we go. Clone Cadets on Camino before the event of Rookies. <sighs> season one, episode five. Five Clone Cadets of the Deme uh, uh, Domino Squad Domino. are at risk of washing out unless they pull a team together while trainers Brick Ellis... And Jedi Master Shakti debate their fate. Taylor, you want to start with this episode? And I you about it? I do. This episode, it's definitely out of the rookies. Um, the clone trooper story it arc. Right there, yeah. Yeah, it's definitely at the bottom because I love the outpost one and the one that follows on Camino. I love even more. Um, but what is uh, the outpost one? The outpost is the one that you liked. The episode from the first is called season. rookies. Yeah. Oh. Um, but this one, uh, I, I definitely enjoyed it as part of the story arc. I like seeing where the clone troopers came from and how they started. I love si- Oh! They're just my fucking way today. They're just, they must have moved in the middle of the night. <laughs> Stay! No more slipping. For the listeners, that's my authentic Woody and Buzz toys. They're just moving all over the place. Moving. Continue. So yeah, they, um... I think that their, their origin story in this episode is fantastic. And I, I really enjoyed seeing, like, uh cut up and his dynamic with that bounty hunter yeah. because he's just gosh he's just he's really pissed him off and i love how that bounty hunter was like stirring him on like what are you gonna do clone think you're some sort of cut up and he's like haha 
ah, that's a great name. Thanks for giving it to me. And uh, yeah, so I just love the whole dynamic behind it. And uh, I just thought it was a super cool episode where they just they just bicker and they can't work as a team. And I feel like I'm in some Xbox Live party clan with like a bunch of Halo players that are like 12 years old. Oh no, better yet. I feel like I'm playing a four player team game of Fortnite and I'm getting told what to do by these little 10 year old kids. And they're just bickering and everything, screaming at me, telling me they're gonna kill my kill me and, and like like ruin my family in ways that I shouldn't say. But yeah, just you know, typical Xbox stuff. And so that's the equivalent to these clones bickering. Taylor's working out some personal issues on the cast <laughs> here, so uh, what was I was gonna say a few things. One, that just shows why PlayStation's better than Xbox. Two, I do like some of these episodes. I'm a little bit quiet today. I'm just getting over a sickness. I was uh, through it quite a bit these past few days, so that's great. So just so you know, I'm, I'm trying to give my 100%, but I'm not seeming bored here. I just have uh, half of my body, body fluids are gone. Um, and then also, I think Taylor does this terrible thing where uh, he compares things to other things, but he doesn't mean it in the right way. <laughs> I think Taylor, oh, I guess Taylor's right in the sense of he told me, he got me excited for this episode because he's like, oh, it's like the Rookies episode. So I thought, okay, that's great. But I think Taylor was kind of right, but I think the way he compared it was because it's like Rookies as far as like it is before Rookies. So he's like, oh, it's like that Rookies episode. But really, I think it does not match the heights of the Rookie episode. Well, I meant it's like the Rookies episode. I can tell why like, Taylor loves these episodes, especially the first two, because they're all about like clones and troopers and everything like this and all about the mission and stuff like that. But for me, it's like, it's just a training episode. I don't really care about them as much as Taylor does. I like the episodes. That's why Rookies caught me off guard, because I did like Rookies. It was a, you know, but the, the thing about Rookies, it was a nice sustained issue. Their lives were on the line. It was early. It was a nice war kind of tactician sort of uh, mission or uh, episode. As far as this, it's just a training episode. And for you, someone that's really into the clones, I imagine that's great to see them all train and, you know, their little prequels. But for me, if their lives are on the line, it doesn't really matter. Especially that's a prequel. It's like, oh, I really don't care. Like, I don't care about these characters enough to want to see a prequel about, hey, how did they get here and how did they... Uh, form a team, how do they uh, bond, how they get their stupid nicknames, so uh, yeah, I, I also thought for a, a premiere it was very weak, I think they should have done the second episode's premiere, but uh, yeah, what, what else do you got to say on this, what are some of your notes, I have a few. Um, I, I, my notes are all in my head, I never write them down for this. It's yeah, all, dangerous. But uh, no, I think the show overall was, uh, the episode was, it was good, I like seeing just the tension between the clones' relationships, I like seeing how, you know, just the, the bounty hunters and even Shock T kind of displayed a disregard for their life and sometimes it felt like, you know, you know they were just clone troopers. Um, but it seems weird that they're just willing to throw them into maintenance. Because I feel right away. Like, yeah, right away. Because I feel like, you know, all the clone troopers are programmed to be uh, obedient and follow orders. But yet, amongst themselves, they they couldn't do it. I feel like with when you have these squads that you, you know, you throw together with clone troopers, I feel like one of each clone trooper in that squad would essentially be like the team captain and he's the one who relays the orders and helps the team work and follow as a group, a unit. But they were all just, they didn't have that. So I mean, yeah. they're, they're, t they're giving them an objective and they're told to complete this mission, but they're not given any proper leadership. They're tasked with orders, but I feel like, you know, it's one thing to be given orders, but it's one thing to actually have someone in the battle, like normally sergeants or corporals that are actually, you know, telling you what's your basic outline for the plan. Uh, I don't know, I guess it's to help them improvise, but it was cool to see the clones kind of mount and figure out what to do and eventually succeed in the end, because I'm glad they did, because a lot of these clone characters play pivotal roles throughout future seasons. Pivotal. Pivotal. Oh, but yeah. why, why do we, and this is why it's great to have Taylor on these clone episodes, because to me, uh, if you've been following along, if you haven't, then... For me, the episodes I like the most are all story-based or character-based as far as progressing the story of the wars further, as far as catching Dooku, catching uh, Grievous, maybe something to do with Anakin turning the dark side, stuff with Obi-Wan, or like I said, those character moments, Obi-Wan revealing some stuff that, you know, maybe uh, he would have left Jedi at one point, and then, uh, you know, some interrogation rooms. With this, if you have an episode to me that's just action and just about adventure and something like that's supposed to be intense and make you worry for the characters, to me it has to be something great. For me, I don't think this was great. And that's I mean, what does this value the story going forward that we didn't like? 
what does this add about the characters that we didn't already know or need to know? I think, you know, to, to see where certain stories, or certain characters' stories end, it really pays to know where they begin. And I think Lucas shares that appreciation. <laughs> he really does. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid prequels, you don't oh. know. So I just, but I uh, feel like I learned about the rookies as far as, like, the difference is that episode, it wasn't them as commanders, they were rookies, right? In that episode, that's why it's called rookies. For, so to me, that was almost like a beginning. I didn't need to see their training academy, their little relationship. That was, okay, the first time on the job, their rookies are one of the first nights. They get bombarded, but they uh, prevail, and now I'm watching their adventure. But why did I need to go back to be, like, rookie, think, rookies episode? I think for the the sake of the show being a kid's show, I think, you know, Oof. they wanted to really display that, you know, that feeling like, hey, this is, you know, the clone troopers, you know, this is the clone troopers in school, like, and they're training in the academy, and this is what they're going through, you know, mm-hmm. they got these tests they got to get through, and I think, and for a kid's perspective, you know, it promoted that sense to a kid, that, that, um, that feeling that, you know, work as a team, communicate, and you can, you know, you can win at the end of the day. You can conquer. You, you got to cooperate, and you got to listen, you got to work hard. And that's what the clones did. I feel like this is one of those episodes that was doing that for the kids, in that sense. For the kids. For the yeah. kids. Old Jimmy. Uh, let's see. Uh, what notes do I have here? Uh, Shaw to you is nice to hear. I, we haven't really seen her that much in the show so far. She's kind of just been tangentially around, or I think I said that word right, but, uh, some characters. She seems to be a stern Jedi. I, I, I like her, obviously. I like her a lot from the Force Awakens game, or Force Unleashed Force game. Force Awakens game. That one's great, too. No one else played it, just because JJ is my friend. He sent it to me. He just made it for me. But, uh, yeah, so I like that character from that, but I've not really gotten no much of her personality, so she seems, uh, kind of a stern Jedi. What do you feel about, uh, Shock T? Um, yeah, I only know her from Force Unleashed, and I know her from her death scene in Revenge of the Sith. Deleted death scene. Deleted death scene, scene. Not, not yeah. Canon. Um, other than that, I don't know too, too much about her. She definitely seemed like a very humble, grounded, uh, Jedi who is just kind of, I think, she definitely feels different compared to all the rest. I think you can, you can compartmentalize certain Jedi in, and catalog them in certain groups, but she feels very different from the rest in her own sense. And I don't know if it's just kind of the way her vibe she puts out there or what it is, but she's um, yeah, she seems she seems okay. She's seems okay. She she's definitely she's she's got something going on, but she's definitely not one of my top tier favorite Jedi. She didn't no. make it into the polls, so no, apparently all those polls are very old. Yeah, they're very, very old. Cool. But you know what? Polls in they'll, these episodes and they'll, they're done. They'll, uh, she'll, she's definitely in the, the new Star Wars poll, the Clone Wars expanded that one. That hasn't happened yet. Stuff. How do you know? We, you said you we have DC and Game of Thrones next. Yeah. yeah so I imagine it has not next. I don't, <laughs> I don't know anymore. Uh, so maintenance clone. Let's talk about him. Uh, right, so they yeah. they have this guy. So like Taylor said, why would they send these guys down to maintenance? And for me, up in this point in the canon, they've never said anything about if you fail, you become a maintenance clone or something like that. So they've introduced this maintenance clone who I don't understand how he works because they're based off of Django's DNA, right? And Django, he's just... Is he aging at a normal rate? Django? Yeah, Django Fett. Django Fett? He, yeah, he's a regular aging normal. Okay, so how does he have a clone that is older than him? The clones are... Well, you know this. They explain this in uh, Attack of the Clones. I don't think... Well, maybe they do, but maybe I forgot. They accelerate age? Yeah, they oh, okay. They accelerate their Except age. Except for Boba. Yeah, Boba was an unaltered clone. Right. Okay, okay. So that's why... So he's the only one kicking around just because the rest of them probably die in battle and he's a... Uh, just a maintenance guy. Well, we don't know that he's technically really, really old. He he's very wrinkled. He's talking very raspy voice. He has like a hunchback. Yeah, back. yeah, but that's not because he's old. I don't. He's know. a he's genetic. He's genetically deformed because of the cloning process. Oh, is that what you took away from it? Yeah. Why? What did you get? That he's an old droll. Does it's, a clone. Does it say that? No, but I I have to look it up. What is his name? Ninety nine. Oh god, I gotta look this up. So you think he's just a defective? I think he's just, yeah, because you know, you can pump out and stretch DNA as much as you want, but I think eventually down the line, you're gonna have one defective one that's not gonna turn out the way you want. Mm. You're not gonna put him down. It's, it's not like Lassie or something, you can just take out back or old yeller it. Because, like, you could argue that he is a senior. You could, but I think he's just, you know, he's had a tough life 
Ninety nine was a human male clone of Django Fett. Uh, blah blah blah. He was malformed in the cloning process. However, suffered nu- numerous ge- genetic and physical defects. As a result, was deemed for um, deemed unfit for service in the army and instead provided janitor maintenance work on his home planet. Coming in, now. okay, well that. That they makes even say that. Sadder. They say that in the show too, because he he talks like I never even got the chance to go out into combat or whatever. Yeah, but that's the thing with these. I just took him out as me going in the field because if these guys failed the test, they would also not got the chance to go to combat, right? They would have been him. Yeah, true. So true. that's how I took. You could have took it either way. So he is just like the most Forrest Gump motherfucker <laughs> like I've ever seen in Star Wars. And I'm not saying manly challenge. They just go for like. He's just very saying all these analogies and very sad and mopey, but very hopeful at the same time. Like, where's this one thing? At one point, uh, Cut Up says, like, oh, we're just numbers. He says, to me, you always have a name. And he's, like, smiling, and there's, like, like, hopeful music. So that was quite a character. I could never decide if I liked him or I despised him. But uh, in the end, I think I ended up liking him. Probably because spoilers, he doesn't last for a long time. <laughs> so I think if I took a lot of Clone 99, it maybe would have been too much for me. But I think the fact that he was only in there a little bit uh, was fine. So, yeah. Um, what was the... Also, Shock T, she doesn't have like, a canon ending right now, does she? Because if they kill off the legends... I don't remember. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna take it. Don't down. remember. Um. So there's two things. One was the name of that uh, hit the the bounty hunter who's like beating up cut up. Um. He's like the big brain. Yeah, guy. it wasn't Alice or whatever his name is. It was the other guy. It was the other guy. Um. There's Alice, Shock T, and Brick. Brick. Yeah. Brick. Yeah. I didn't like him at all. I couldn't take him seriously. Not because his look. Because yeah, he has like this big gigantic brain, pretty much. But just even in that scene, it was like, when he was beating him up, she's like, yeah, you like that, huh, cut up? Like, it was really, like, <laughs> oh, Woody! <laughs> it was very, like, I don't know, like, male domination sort of. <laughs> and just like, come on, cut up. Like, yeah, I like you call me cut up. It was, like, it was very strange. I don't know why you were listening. It was to watch, watch it again. It was just like, if someone is into, like, getting beat up during sex, that's what that scene was, and he was just very kind of over the top, so I didn't like any scenes with Brick, but yeah, go back and watch that scene. Very strange, Jesus. very strange scene. I just waited for him to take off his pants and get on his knees, wait for your arm out like I that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe put it up higher. Okay, so let's go on a shock team. Oh, I can confirm that during, uh, as she meditated, during the attack on the Jedi <laughs> Temple, she was killed by Darth Vader. <gasps> Oh, uh, wait, Anakin or Darth well, Anakin? Anakin, so like, Anakin. It, was, it was literally... When did when, they do this? What do you mean? Like, when did they do this? Because obviously you remember... When the clones stormed the Jedi Temple. No. I fucking know that <laughs> in the young ladies. Mr. Skywalker, there's too many! I know it's Master, but whatever. Um, but like, when did they... I mean, like, did they read that in a comic or a book or what? Oh, I don't know. That's just what it said listed in canon or whatever. So I think they probably just wrote her off. Wow, great. Um... Yeah, I got not much to add on this episode. This episode I would not recommend. This episode that uh, I don't know if I'll ever watch this series again, but I would easily skip. I'll give it a thumbs up because I think it's solid. It provides some entertainment. I don't think it's like a bad, terrible episode. It's, it was fine. So So this episode or Dr. What's that? Dr. Uh, on the Boo. We're going to kill all the Naboo people. Remember? I think that episode was probably so bad that I have uh, blanked from memory because I don't know what you're talking about. I think you remember it. Oh, no, I legitimately don't. He spread the mist and... (laughs) Oh, God! (laughs) Now you remember. No, that was definitely worse. (laughs) Um, Yeah, this is just like a fine generic episode that's not neat at all. I think you can take it out and what Taylor's talking about with their journey, it's the exact same. Other than adding 99 and that weird, like, I don't know, homosexual male erotica gay beating scene <laughs> it gave me nothing so I'll give this one thumb up okay um is it ARC Troopers or RC ARC Troopers ARC Troopers okay taking place oh fuck again I'm this right, is, I forgot but this is a sequel to all the other ones so this is after I know it's some weird goddamn Pulp Fiction machete order George Lucas oh, is doing yeah. up here taking place at they can't call it a prequel they don't know where it happens uh taking place after season one episode rookies general Greaves and Ventress 
uh, Separatist forces launch a major attack. Not some good writing on this, circuit feeling. Launches a major attack on the uh, Republic, cloning facilities on Kamino with Anakin, uh, Obi Wan, Jedi Master, Shakti, and the 501, the 501st the f- defending it? Yeah, the 501st. That's, that's what it's called? Yeah, that's because there's, some weird there's, there's, there's all these things. And how come in the Wikipedia, how come. Is Obi Wan not a Jedi Master yet at the time? Of no, the he's people? a Jedi Master. So how come in the Wikipedia, Shock T just gets a Jedi Master label? Is it Jedi Master Shock T? It says with Anakin, Obi Wan, and Jedi Master Shock T. Well, that's just some weird. I don't know. But he is a Jedi Master at this point because during the Clone Wars, he sits on the council as a Jedi Master. I wasn't sure if it was. like... So I was unsure when it happens because oh. who knows. But you didn't know the clones were designated to battalions? Like Anakin. I'm sure, I'm, sh- I'm sure I knew, but I think it's like, as far as my Star Wars knowledge and when I leveled Star Wars, it was very, very low down line. You see how I already forgot about that whatever poison episode? That I can understand. And I don't, ca- I don't really. Oh, <laughs> you're like, and that is going to tell me why I should very value the battalions. It's fun, I get it, <laughs> but like, I'm not a big army buff in real life, I'm not a big history buff, so. No, I, I probably knew, but I didn't care enough. By, by the end of this... this but Taylor whole, loves this stuff. Oh, yeah, by the, action figures. By the end of the retro, huh? Huh? you're oh, gonna... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be in the thumbnail. I'll put that oh, scene. God, no! <laughs> no, but the, the clones, though, like, it's super cool, because, like, the, the battalion that was under, served under Anakin at Stone Jedi Temple, that's the 501st. And then <laughs> I'm never gonna remember Obi Wan Kenobi's with Cody. That's the 212 Battalion. <laughs> and, uh, that's Cut Ups Battalion. Cut Ups. Then uh, Yoda on Kashyyyk. That's the 41st Battalion Corps, uh, or the 41st Elite Corps, I believe it's called. And then there's um, what is Ola Sakura is on Felucia is the 200. But what and... you know, I'm a person that cares about character first and then story. Why does this matter to me? You're the lore canon guy. When you well, oh, it matters I Zippo. Uh, I liked this episode. It was back being. Uh, it was fun being back in Camino. I know we were there, but in like the sense of a battle. I've been playing Battlefront recently, so that's always a fun map. So I liked all the battles going on. I just used the word battle like four times in a row. I liked all the fights and the sequences. But no, it was a good. I think I've always said this before that lots of these episodes you get these. You get episodes, there's four episodes in the Clone Wars. There's the filler episodes, which we're going to get into. There's one coming up with a fucking Mr. Binks character. There's just the pure action episodes. There's story episodes as far as Vance and the War, and there's the character episodes. This is definitely an action episode. I don't think it advances the character too much or story, but I would put this, I don't think I like it as much as Rookies, but I'd put it in that vein of it's just a good kind of balls to the wall. Hey, we're getting invaded. We're taking people down. Obviously, you've got the Rookie squad there, or the 5 the 51st there. First. Um, so it's kind of continuing their story, but then you got Anakin Obi Wan on top of that. We got some fun Jedi sequences going on, which led me to some questions. But uh, and it was good to see Ventress back because she was not really around in season two. Oh yeah, and at I, all through this episode, she was insanely dark. I'm trying to remember exactly how she acted, but like when she there's a clone, she chokes him, which is one of the best kills ever. Then she slowly pulls him in towards the lightsaber. Yeah. And then when he dies, she kisses him on the cheek. <laughs> yeah. So cool. Like, <laughs> like uh, the kiss on the cheek is great because I always like, you know, action and sex skin like intertwined. But not the cut-up scene, though. But, like, that was the idea of it. Remind me of the first time when I saw Kylo Ren do that to Snoke. Like, that's such a cool idea of, like, igniting it using the Force. That was a good idea of killing someone while bringing them to it. So that was dumb. Uh, and that just made me think I want to see more of her. I really liked, uh, well, I really liked the episode. I'll let Taylor talk and then we'll get more in Avengers. But I liked the episode overall. Yeah, I think it was great. It really showcased, you know, more of 99's potential. And, uh, it, um... <laughs> yeah, it sure did. <laughs> or lack thereof. <laughs> like, there's oh, one well. moment before I get 99 goes, there's one, okay, so these droids come up, uh, and 99's brought them some, uh, whatever, it's just some uh, additional ammo, grenades, and whatnot. These droids come up, and then he's like, look, over there! And then, uh, one of the clones, I don't know which one is which, I never know. He throws a grenade, blows up the droids, and then there's smoke, and you can't see. I think that was Echo. Cool. Yeah, Echo and then, <laughs> not cut up. And then so there's smoke, 
And then you'll have to point out to me which one is actually cut up so I can actually. Well, at this point, comment. they're all dead. Cut up stand now? Yeah, remember, remember, now go back to rookies. Remember when the worm, they were underneath the base and the giant worm came out and yeah. cut up got attacked and wow. eaten? Yeah, he's dead. And then Heavy yeah. was the one who blew up the base. So now I really needed all this info for characters that already died. So your story, now this episode, you know what? The episode goes down. We didn't give the episode thumbs or not. I'm going a middle thumb now. It was a thumb? For what? The prequel? Clone Cadets. Because the middle thumb, now that I was continuing these stories, and you're like, oh, continue some further. Not really, because they're already dead. It's just prequel whites <laughs> again. Um, what, did you give the episode a thumb or a thumb? I gave it one thumb. Okay. Up. With this one, um, so, anyway, so, they're, the droids are coming. They throw grenades, there's smoke, and then, 99, who proves that, why well, there's a reason he's main. He goes, look, there's more of them, shoot, or something like that. All the guys, the clones, get their guns, and it's a bunch of, like, little boba, like, kids. Like, just yes. all the kid versions. So, like, if you listen to 99... Like, and just shot right away, he would have killed a bunch of these kids. I just want to show, show about 99 that, oh yeah, there's a reason why he's not on the field. And he's like, I never had to do combat. There's a reason he almost led to the death of a bunch of children. So, yeah, we got to see more potential of 99, like Taylor said. So, yeah. continue. Um, yeah, no, I think overall, just, I love seeing Fives and Echo, you know, develop more in this. I love Fives. He's my favorite clone trooper in the Clone Wars, by far. Um, my favorite's dead. Cut up. Cut up. R.I.P. Yeah. Yep. Um, but uh, overall, I love seeing just how the Separatists actually took the planet by storm and invaded. I love, again, that this map is the in representation of Kamino in Star Wars Battlefront 2. It's one of my favorite maps to play on. Um, I really, really enjoyed seeing Grievous and Ventress interact. This is the first time we see both of them interact together in a scene. And I just felt like it was very much how two, you know, evil, like, generals would interact with each other in that sense. Um, you know, they both want power and they both want to prove to Dooku that they're superior. And, yeah, I just, I love their interaction, especially when Ventress is, like, my dear general. There's nothing you have that I could want and, and all that stuff. Um, I really found it to be an awesome scene when Anakin got the DNA back and um, she was like, are you going to arrest me? And he clearly just states... No, I'm gonna let the clones execute you right here. Like, just laying down the law. Which that's not. That? He said that. Yeah. I miss that again. He should be in prison already. But. So I mean, that's clearly not the Jedi way at all. No. But I, to me, I thought it was badass. I'm like, yeah, fucking right, Anakin. Do this shit. You know, I'm gonna let the clones execute you right here. You know, and uh, technically, he's not doing it out of. He's not executing her. He's letting the clones. He's not stopping her. it either, though. True. True. Um, <laughs> but I, I love seeing how they got the clone cadets, you know, involved too, when they popped out of their little cubby holes and they're shooting the droids from the flank. So, uh, yeah, I thought that was pretty awesome. I always love seeing Obi-Wan and Grievous dish it out, and I love their dialogue back to back. Like, especially in Star Wars Battlefront 2, their dialogue is fantastic. It's off the charts. So, in this, it's cool. I love seeing Grievous, like, crawling around when that platform falls and he crawls to the edge. He's like, ha, 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 ha. That's my Grievous laugh. <laughs> Um, then he crawls away, and I love Obi-Wan's relationship with that creature, like, we have to stop meeting like this, my friend, and stuff like that, like, this is so good, this episode, two thumbs up. Why would he, wow, when he was in the water, why was he, like, holding his throat? Well, he's choking on the water, he's trying to hold his breath. I'm sure when you're drowning, people tend to hold their throat, right? I wouldn't know. No? Okay, you never drowned you before? <laughs> no, have you seen people drown before? Only in movies, they usually go for their throat. I don't think so. The thing about Sam, he's just like dying. Well, Sam didn't know I what he was doing. I guarantee you, if we went on YouTube and we searched, uh, we're not going to do it right now, but if we searched 10 best drowning scenes, which is very morbid, but if we watched, I don't think many of them would be on there. I think they would go. I think maybe throat. three out of 10, but not the majority. Well, why is it when people get force choked, they go for their throat? Because that's different. They're choking. Ah, uh, yes. But I feel like the wa they're not choking on water, they're just running out of air. If he did, because his mouth was closed the whole time, right? Yeah. Uh, so with this episode, yeah, I said everything, like I said, uh, I don't have too many notes, because most of it was just lots of good action going on, I totally missed that Anakin thing, so I might have to even go back and listen to that, because everyone knows how I feel about Anakin, and the Jedi just did a terrible job since Qui-Gon put him there, and then continued on, just the worst teachers ever, uh, Luke's right, the Jedi should die, but, you know, licensing, licensing, so with Ventress, yeah, I liked her, we haven't seen her in a while, I really liked her back and forth with Grievous, like Taylor was talking about, um, oh yeah, because Grievous was like, uh, oh yeah, Dooku's trained me the same as you. 
I feel like Reeves is just <laughs> such an imbecile. Like, he has no IQ. Like, yeah, he has a... Because I, I don't even believe... I think they did it for cinematic value, but I don't really believe that he should have put up as much of a fight and read into a Sith against Obi-Wan as he did. Um, and I feel like Ventress could still easily... I, I think it's warranted because he's killed yeah. a lot of Jedi. He, he has experience. He has because the story tells him that that's what we need. Especially with Ventress when we just saw her do that guy. My thing is, and the problem is with the Force is... Oh, I thought... No. Uh, so... That's the problem with the prequels is they set up some stuff and some people might argue that last shit. I won't get into that right now because that's a whole other thing. Let's just do the Clone Wars. So you look at Phantom Menace, right? What do Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan do when the droidy cars show up? Uh, they leave. But how, well, how do they leave? Uh, don't they use like a force move? Like they a force speed, dash? They speed run. Yeah, whatever, force dash. How come Obi-Wan doesn't use that when... Darth Maul and Qui-Gon are fighting and he has to get to him. Why didn't he use that then? I think in that scene, honestly, I think he was feeling a little bit emotionally compromised. I think it pulled from it. Okay, so upset. then on Mustafar, when Anakin and Obi-Wan are fighting and they're all these little things and whatnot, and they're just and there's one moment where Obi-Wan jumps and he lands on one of the machines and Anakin jumps and he's going, whoa, whoa, why doesn't Obi-Wan just force push him off and it's game over? My problem is Grievous to me. I really like Grievous because he's cool. Of course, he has four arms. He has four lightsabers. But I feel like for maybe, okay, Padawans or even Knights and fine. But as far as the Masters, and Ventures, I can't say she's a Master, but she's it's, uh, she's showing powers that other people like a Vader have shown, like Dooku have shown, that I don't feel like, same thing as what we want, that Grievous would actually put up that much of a fight. I feel like Grievous charged them. They force push them. They force choke them. And then while that's happening, you just slice them and it's over. You know, I feel like the plot, and that happens lots of times in Star Wars, probably in all the movies, but it makes them weaker when they need to be. And that's why I never, with Grievous, I feel like he would just get destroyed quite easily by almost any of the, like, the popular characters in Star Wars. I don't know, because when you train against one, um, like, a guy with, you know, get, who's been training on with Grievous the Jedi Arts, doesn't matter. Yeah, he but, doesn't have the Force. True, but look at how many characters have bested Jedi that aren't, like, soldiers or Yeah, and I think like that's sometimes that. like, dumb, too. Yeah, but then look at even the clone troopers who managed to kill all the Jedi. Yeah, I, I know. That's a bit different, because I feel like it's coming from behind, and you could say... I don't know, because, like, look at Plo Koon. That has nothing to do with the Force. Plo He's Plo in a ship. Plo Koon, I mean. That's Plo Koon is his cousin. Um, he's just in a ship. He has taken down Squidward. He can just turns around and gets shot. But I'm saying Grease is taking them on one by one. Like, one on one. And I really don't I think... I feel like to know the Jedi arts and the way they're going to fight definitely gives yeah. him an edge. And then it gives him, using it give that him technique... It gives him an edge, but I don't think give him the win. But using that technique, you know, with, it's like, with one lightsaber is one form of style. But when a Jedi has to deal with, you know, the, their fighting style and four lightsabers coming at, the, coming at them at once, I think that really changes it. All... So if there's a world champion boxer, and I, if I either go and fight him right now, or I fight him after six months of training, yeah, I got a bit more of an edge after six months of training, but he's still going to kick my ass, because he has years and training that I'll never have. But how do you know Grievous hasn't had, like, he's obviously he doesn't had have a the lot force. of, he doesn't have the force, so no, there you go. but he's got a lot, a lot of training. So he, obviously he has a voice box, right? You can choke him. He's not a robot. He has just robotic things I don't think right? you can force choke him. Why not if he's coughing? He's a cyborg, but I but don't no, know. But no, he has organs, so he has. No, lungs. he doesn't have a throat. He's got vocal, um, vocal, um, oh, what are they called? Chords? Vocal, no, no, no. It's like his vocal processors. He actually says he's got vocal processors at some point, yeah. I just don't believe that even someone like Dooku finding out the electric thing, you just electric shock him and it's over, and you just gotta do that. He's bugging out and you take him out. Like, he, as long as he has organs. Like, and even then, his little, like, stomach it's organs... It's protected just, by... I'm not sure what his plating is, but his plating is, like, okay, really strong Okay, keep force material. pushing him up against the wall until it breaks. Because, you know what? You're a Jedi. You can just keep doing it. You just, boom, force push, force push. Why don't the Jedi do it? Well, I don't know. Why don't they? Yeah, that's, but go, that's the thing. Go. That's why, because the plot armor. Because Grievous has to be stronger. When he's doing his little run, or when in Red Dead Sip, when he's just spinning his, whatever, arms around coming over one, why don't Obi-Wan just force push him? He's not emotionally compromised there. He's just going up against an enemy. But why, no why is there a no... reason that Jedi don't force push anyone with a lightsaber? There must be a reason why they don't. I don't know. I'll look into it. But I, that's why it's sometimes I think that I've always prescribed for the reason of, like, okay, maybe it's like a recharge thing. So my way of writing off was when Anakin and Obi-Wan do that thing at the beginning of their fight. They blow each other away. It's like, okay, they're kind of tired from that. But with Grievous, 
I th- and maybe it's something like you know with other Jedi's maybe it's just force and cancel it out. Grievous, I can't find any way why he hasn't really been killed. I look at him as like a good general, and I like him evading when he's in stuff. But when he's like, I've killed many Jedi, and him like threatening Ventress, I don't think he'd have really a chance at all. I think he's, I think there's a minuscule of like he could beat Han Solo, he could beat Chewbacca, but I don't think any of like our main characters, like the any characters you have the Star Wars pool, I don't think he would have won. And look, he what didn't he lose first round too? Cyborg versus Cyborg. Darth Vader. People like Darth Vader more than they liked. Uh, no, not well. Lots of people think it's a fight thing. So, a lot. I don't know why people think it's a fight thing. I've tried to. Because you put so versus. Versus. Like you put versus. Fan based. Whatever the reason. Uh, okay. So, anyways, yeah, Grievous is a bitch. You get destroyed pretty easily. Um, uh, my other thing is so Dooku because I don't have much of this notes and that's what this show's about. It's about lore and whatnot. Because like I said, good episode overall. Good action. It's just kind of a. Classic Grievous episode, he comes down, does some destruction, and he escapes. I've realized that's going to be every Grievous episode now. You know why? Because he doesn't get caught to the end of the set. So great. Um, so Dooku, why, in your opinion, and I'm talking about maybe his conversation with Obi-Wan in Attack of the Clones, do you feel like he joined the dark side because he was becoming evil on the dark side? Or do you feel like he joined Emperor and Palpatine and the Septus more because... He didn't agree with the political views of the Jedi and the people they were with. I think him and Qui-Gon shared a very similar look. I think that's where Qui-Gon maybe probably mm-hmm. picked Qui-Gon up. Qui-Gon had long hair. He had short hair. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, mental look. So I think Qui-Gon definitely... Uh, I think... I'm asked about Dooku, though. Yeah, you are. But I think the, the difference between the two of them is I don't think Qui-Gon was willing to go to the length that Dooku was. Dooku, for whatever reason... You know, he was older, and he obviously could step back and see a lot of these changes happening, and... I don't know, Palpatine just sips his seedy little, um, his flappy, flagellant Sith, whatever. What were you, what did you call it? <laughs> I don't know, I think I remember your... His, I don't know what it was from a couple episodes, it's been a while, I was sneaky Sith god. Yeah, something. something like that. He just wor- wiggles that around, and Dooku's like, okay, Sidious, so... Re- so you don't, you don't, you think that he tricked Sidious and or Dooku into joining him in a way? I don't think he tricked. I think, you Because I could say with Maul, I don't know, Maul and his origins, they're always kind of a little iffy, so whatever. Well, he was indu- in, in, uh, inducted into the Sith as uh, an infant, like from birth. Well, yeah, so that's so, kind of a little unfair, so it's like he kind of grew up that way. True. But Vader when, and Anakin were definitely tricked, because like Vader went on a pretense of like, oh, we're going to save Padme, right? So he was kind of duped a little Well, he bit. was tricked and he was manipulated. I mean, well, that's yeah. why, you know, Sidious separated him from his friends and his close people during the time when he fully was going to convert him. So I don't feel like Dooku... I feel like, sure, Palpatine's the ultimate puppet master, but I feel like Dooku, he got played at the end when he got to, you know, Bannock, and that's definitely when, okay, yeah, you got played. But when he was joining him, I feel like he was not being played. I feel like they had a similar goal. My idea is, okay, let's say for some reason, whether it's Dooku killing him, Palpatine dies, I don't feel like Dooku... I feel like Dooku joined the Sith, but he wasn't a true Sith. That's why I've also seen theories of, like, that's why his eyes were still regular, because he wasn't actually filled with that... Like, he's filled with hate, but not, like, the Sith way. Do you think because he didn't have Sith values, like, whole... Like, start to finish, wholeheartedly, if, let's say, for some reason, Palpatine dies, and he's, like, the one Sith around... Do you think he would have followed the rule too? Because he's kind of not. Yes. But I feel like no, because he already kind of has Grievous, who's training in the Jedi ways, and Ventress, who's like, I hate this. That's why I hate the rule too, if they don't stick to it. Because, like, her, I hate that they read off. She's well, a Sith Ventress, assassin. Yeah, she's a Sith assassin. That's, that's the laziest but... writing of all time. How do we get another Sith in here? Oh, she's a Sith assassin. Not a, that doesn't align with anything they say in the movies, that there are only two Sith. I don't care if it's a Sith assassin. Or a Sith dishwasher. There can't be Siths anywhere. But so. there, she isn't a Sith, though. She's an assassin. They call her a Sith for, assassin. No, she, but she's an assassin for the Sith. Yeah, but she's using four. She's using lightsabers. To me, that's full. She's yeah, full on but Sith. when it begin, when that story that does get dealt with, and Sidious does actually speak to Dooku about where that is leading, and he enforces the rule of two with Dooku. I'm not going to go into detail about it. So it's then, coming up. Eventually, it is coming up. Actually, okay. I think this season it is. But okay. it's something Secret that Samuel. with Dooku, I feel like, you know, even then, like, he joined the Sith, but I feel like he joined the Sith in secret. It was something that they learned later on that Dooku was a Sith, but they didn't even know 
his name was Darth Tyrannus at yeah. that time. They just knew him as Count Dooku of Serino. Count Dooku um, is much better. Darth Tyrannus, such a mouthful. I love Darth Tyrannus as a name. He but, sounds like a dinosaur. <laughs> he does. But I think that Dooku and Sidious actually sat down and they actually probably came to a conclusion. I think it wasn't hard for Sidious to probably manipulate Dooku in the sense that Dooku already thought that the Jedi Order was falling apart, the Republic was crumbling, and that some change or reform needed to happen. And Sidious presented him with the idea of, okay, we're going to create the Separatist uh, Alliance and of Independent Systems, and you can lead this, and you know we'll see what goes. I don't know exactly how much Dooku knew of the Emperor's plot. I think he probably knew a fair amount of it. But I, I for sure know that he probably never suspected that he would have been betrayed or anything like that. Because this is something I want to touch upon later, is all of Sidious's apprentices and their knowledge of Sidious's plot with the clones and with Order 66. Because it seems to be something that was definitely mm, known among his apprentices. And I feel like each one of them maybe thought that, without getting too far into spoilers, but they at least with Count Dooku, they thought like, okay, we'll... I, I will be there when it happens. And then when Anakin mm -hmm. was, you know, disarming him and beheading him, it was... I love that scene, too, when he looks at Palpatine in disbelief. Because as far as he's aware, he probably... He, Dooku wouldn't have lost that battle. And he let Anakin win that, as far as I'm concerned. Because I feel no. like... No, no, I do. I feel like in that There's scene... There's no way he let him take his fucking hand. <laughs> No, I... <laughs> That's such a bull <laughs> No, that's where you're wrong, No, right the way there. that I took that scene, no, though, is ways. that he was supposed to um, lose and surrender it somehow, or not, like, put up a fight that it shows that he was going then to, clearly, win, like, lose, no. but... No, Palpatine is sitting there in handcuffs in a chair. Look, he surrendered, and he didn't lose any land. They could have easily just done one thing where he's getting, like... They're light sailing, and then Dooku pretends to trip. He's like, oh, fuck, you got me. Like, because I feel like it started to take a turn for the worse at that point, because he he was, I don't believe he was supposed to win that. I think at that point, they knew the war was coming no, to an end. No, he wasn't supposed to win that, because Anakin's and he, stronger. But no, I think Dooku believed that he was to be taken, you know, prisoner, put up against the Senate, all that stuff, because especially he knew Anakin wouldn't kill him. It's not the Jedi way. That's how he probably took it, because Dooku didn't know what Anakin was like. He didn't have that inside relationship like Sidious had. Know. So, I feel like that's again why when uh, Palpatine says, kill him, Dooku looks at Palpatine like, hold on now, like this... This not supposed to happen. Like there, I was supposed to be taken as prisoner and all that so stuff. Good because thing. if he's taken as prisoner, then the Order sixty six comes down. Then Palpatine lets Dooku out, and he's still his apprentice, or he leads. I think Dooku was misled and had a whole different idea of what was going to happen presented to him. And in reality, obviously Sidious was thinking, okay, this is another step of manipulation. It's her and Anakin as my apprentice. I so. agree, but I don't agree on Dooku knowing it. I agree that he was set up. I agree that that whole thing is set up to take out Dooku. I think because Anakin is stronger, that's why it takes him out. It's supposed to show, look at the last movie, he got destroyed by Dooku, and this movie he can take him out. So it's supposed to show his, my powers have doubled since last time, I get it. Um, so, like, I understand that. I don't, I think he would have just thought, I lost the fight, I'm disarmed, I guess that's it for me, I'm going to be prisoner, but the good thing is, I have my boy, the Emperor over there, who's going to take care of me, and then he says, do it. Uh, I think that he's like, what? Like, this doesn't make any sense. I don't think he went there knowing he was going to lose. I really Purposely don't. Purposely lost his hands. I, I, yeah, I don't. I think Dooku, <laughs> the way they portrayed him, is a very smart character, and he takes, he doesn't take risks. He does things very calculated. I think even joining the Emperor was a calculated move. I don't think, I'm sure Emperor had some way to get his tongue in his ear and, you know, say something. Tongue like, in his ear. Yeah, say something to turn around and, like you said, maybe trick him a little bit. But I don't feel like he... I don't feel like Dooku would have put himself in a position to be like, yeah, I should get caught and this will be best for us. I feel like Dooku would have been like, no, nah, I'm out of here. There's something up. Or I feel like he would have tried to take the Emperor's life and either succeeded or failed. But I don't think he would have been uh, 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 volunteering to get locked up. I don't know, because it would have made sense for him, Order 66 comes down and he gets released afterwards, and then he lives his merry life. Or it would just have made sense that he was on a ship somewhere and he was fine. Because why would he, what's the pitch? He's perfectly fine, right? The only way the Jedi get him is because they know Palpatine has been kidnapped, right? They go to so we'll save him. So if Duke, Duke who's not on that ship and he's just chilling out and he's like, hey, just wait here till Order 66 or whatever happens, and then you come out. 
Why would you be like, why can't I just go in hiding until this thing happens and then I join you? Why do I need to get locked up? That's why I feel like he, I think Dooku is not a dumb character. Grievous, I could buy. Dooku's not a dumb character. I think it was because if he's hiding on a ship, like, he's fine. He no, didn't, he's he fine. Didn't, he, didn't, he didn't, Palpatine wouldn't have wanted that though because he would have been But then Dooku would have been like, you hide all the time, you motherfucker. But he's not, he's, he's no, not he the as the emperor, he, No, but as the emperor, he hides. Yeah, He course. doesn't come out, he's never just like on the ship and he's like, Obi-Wan, like, he's not doing that, right? So his Sith version of himself is hiding. So why would Dooku be like that? Like, I feel like he would smell the bullshit and be like, something's up. I'm not doing this. I don't this. know, I feel like he wanted, you know, I, I, I had, I had, I was going to word this in my head. He, fuck. Oh, like, <laughs> <laughs> He, oh, motherfucking fuck, fuck it. Wow. Fuck. wow. I have it in my head. I can't put in the words. Um, no, I think that he wanted Dooku out in the open like that because he yeah, wanted. Yeah, I agree with you. He wanted, but I don't. Ends. He wanted don't, the war to end. But I don't agree that Dooku would be for it. I agree that the Palpatine, the, here we go again, the Palpatine would want it. But I don't think Dooku would go for that plan Dooku for any second. Dooku would be for it if he knew that he no. would have been safe and secure because he knew Legit, that the the only way the war was going to come to an end is if Dooku and General Grievous were either arrested or executed. And he was probably assured, Dooku, you will be arrested by the Jedi and we will be taking you to the temple. No, or they can just, the second they won the war, they can smudge the records and say... Oh, Dooku at some point died in battle and we never discovered found his body. Yeah, but that the same way they said about Anakin they, the same way they lied about his death. But they lied about Anakin's death. They didn't say the oh, Emperor, we killed these the Emperor kids. lied about it, of course. Exactly. He said that so he you died could lie about purge. Dooku's death and yeah, say, but Oh, he I died. don't know if the oh, Jedi would believe that though. But there was no Jedi left after that's what I'm saying. If Order Sixty Six happens and then Dooku goes to gold, live his life or do whatever if he just says, oh, he also died in battle while this was going on, people are like, oh, yeah, good. We got but then how would the Jedi believe that? Because the, his he, death needs the Jedi to be... Dead. No, 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 no. That's not the how Jedi it would work. Yeah, Dooku would. would have to be dead before because the war has to end after. When but Dooku <laughs> dies, no. then you have Maul and You're the making... Jedi, or you have Windu and the Jedi Maul. go to see us. <laughs> That's a whole different movie. Because they, they need to confirm that Dooku and General Grievous are dead or arrested, then they can go remove the emergency powers from the Chancellor, classified as treason, no, but, and okay. then Order 66 but happens here's the and Jedi thing. die. When, Gre- when Dooku's dead, all those clones are still on all these other planets, right? So Obi-Wan is going after Grievous, Squid Face is there, Plo Koon is in the ships. That's still going on with Dooku being dead. So if Dooku was away just hiding, that would still be going on. They'd still be after Grievous, they'd still be fighting on these planets. So that's still going on. Order 66 happens. They all die. And let's just say for their sake, let's say Anakin didn't go with the plan Obi-Wan. They're all dead as well. And then Dooku and him succeeded and the Jedi are gone. If Dooku's alive and Palpatine's alive and the Jedi are gone, they're all dead, then the thing is like, why it wouldn't matter if they were the Jedi thing because they're six feet under. Yeah, but it, I don't know if they would believe the information if Dooku is off hiding no. and someone just presents, presents them saying, "Oh yeah, no, so you but killed you tell Grievous, the public but Dooku after is gone." Yeah, but the thing is, the second Grievous died is when Order sixty six happened, right? Pretty much, they're on that same thing, and then it's like maybe what half an hour later. Well, no, Order sixty six didn't happen when Grievous died. When Grievous died, the war that was the end of the war. The leadership of the Separatists was removed, and so then they went to remove the emergency powers from the Chancellor. If they never went to remove the powers, or is but that's what I mean. Why are they still fighting all the Jedi and everything on those planets? Well, because the droids are still, you know, active and operable. So that's what I mean. It's still happening, so they can just Order Sixty Six would still happen, even if they go to remove that power. Order Sixty Six happens, they did, and guess what? If Dooku's there, hang on too, and if Dooku's high enough, he could just be hiding out that office when Mace Windu, for some reason, let's say him and Anakin go to go talk to me. Uh, Palpatine saying you gotta give the power. Guess what? I got Dooku here as well. He's been hiding here the whole time. Boom! If in this in this series if they try to hide that stupid the z- whatever beast, what is it? What was that in the last? Xylo. The Xylo beast. They sure is gonna hide Count Dooku in a snake like box. So, but they, it's the Order sixty six only happens though if the Jedi go and try to arrest the Chancellor. Or but they can still him. do that. Dooku could still. Dooku does not have to die for any of those events to happen. Even then, Anakin could have still been turned, and then he would have been like, we have to kill Dooku in order for you to be my yeah, apprentice. Yeah, you're right, but side. I think that it came off in the sense where it would have been a more convincing way of ending the war. It would have just been... Because if, if let's say, Dooku was hiding, General Grievous went and captured the Chancellor, Dooku isn't there at all, and then, you know, Chancellor is rescued, Grievous escapes, that all happens, Dooku is still in hiding, and then the Chancellor fudges the numbers and say, clone intelligence found... 
Dooku had managed to execute him on the planet, the Jedi would have been more skeptical skepti skeptical about that. And I, it just, they may not have believed it. It wouldn't have swayed public opinion. But, if but it wouldn't matter confirm, if they're dead. I still say you go through Order 66. They didn't really need to wait till Grievous was dead. They could have just done it. Order 66? Yeah, I know they're waiting for Mace to go up there and do his little bit. But it all comes down to timing as well, because literally, he needed, he could only activate that order when the Jedi posed treason to uh, yes. the Chancellor, and then again, the Chancellor would have activated that after his loose ends would have been finished, Dooku and Grievous, and then he could have obviously, like he did San Anakin to okay. take out the traitor. so fair region. enough, we're going in circles, I'll give you the point <laughs> that, you know, yeah, maybe he couldn't work it, Order 66, but I still think Dooku... <sighs> I don't think Dooku would have known, but I think Palpatine would have said we're getting we're leading towards Order sixty six. But I don't. I just don't think Dooku would have been down with getting caught. Maybe, maybe we'll have to see because you and I thought for a while that what was it that Mace or Palpatine didn't lose that fight to Mace. But then we I found that quote I sent to you, George Lucas saying Mace Windu did actually beat Palpatine in Revenge of the Sith. So. One day when I find George, I'm going to find be like, what did Count Dooku think? And like, what did Count Dooku think? And he'll say, get away from me. He'll shoot me with a water gun and everything like that. So I'll give this episode a thumb up and a half. What episode are we talking about? The Stone <laughs> Arc Troopers. Oh, fuck. I'll give it, <laughs> I gave it two thumbs up. We pitched that. That's what the show about. So we review the episodes, but it's also like Cantina. We get into lore and talk about it. So there you go. And it's good because these next two episodes, I really don't have much to say about. <laughs> uh... Uh, so, I thought it's a slippy line. Supply lines. Uh, while Ryloth under siege, oh, uh, trap Jedi Master. Uh, I'm a Gundy. I'm a Gundy. Or I'm Gundy. Now, do you like uh, his name? I'm gonna die. I'm, I'm Gundy. Uh, I'm Gundy. So Jedi die. Uh, and his close <laughs> force or his clone uh, forces rally. Jesus. <laughs> clone <laughs> forces rally the local forces of Chimsadula. Elsewhere, Jem Shandula. Jem Shandula. Elsewhere, the Jedi Council sends Bill Organa and Jar Jar Binks to go to Toydara okay. to ask King Katunaku <laughs> this this is for a aid of Ryan. Oh, God. You remember, cool. you remember that first episode where Yoda goes to uh, that planet? <laughs> Travis loves these. I remember now. Yeah, yeah, so that's after when they were trying oh to build the my. Case. So this is after this episode? This is a prequel to that episode. No! Why are so, you doing this? But that's the secret. That being the whole said, season's a stupid prequel. That being said, this episode is also a prequel to... You remember the Siege on Ryloth arc with Windu and stuff? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, those two clones find the girl. The little girl yeah. Twilight. Yeah, this is a prequel to that too, I believe. But... That being said, it's just thrown in there, and literally it's its own story arc, which works in the war. So I, I enjoy it. <laughs> it works. Yeah, I don't enjoy this at all. This is a super fill episode. Um, is Jedi Die, Master Die, in any of the movies? Um, maybe you see him in Phantom Menace Attack of the Clones of the Council at some point. I don't know. He's but a council member? Well, I have no idea. He is a Jedi Master, but he's not in Revenge of the Sith because he dies well, here. Well, a Master doesn't have to be on the Council, remember? Quite on. Yeah, Master doesn't have to be on the council. Yeah, you're right. But um, honestly, I I love this episode. Aside from Jar Jar stuff, which is a little iffy or whatever. But I'm a Jar Jar fan. I am a Jar Jar fan. But honestly, Master uh, Magundi or Gundy or whatever, he is it a spoiler? Uh, do they show what's gonna happen to him in the Clone Wars here? What do you mean? Like, is his fate gonna be revealed in the animated series? I'm so lost. His fate is revealed in the episode. Did he die? Didn't you watch the episode? Yeah, I did, but I guess I missed, I missed him dying. Did you miss that whole part? What the? I'm fuck? not gonna lie. I was once again. I've been sick. I'm sitting. There, I'm laying there, I'm lying there with my cute dog, and I put down my phone because I'm gonna watch this. I still got bored, and I also was getting notifications oh. of the ass from Taylor oh. being like creating this fan group and just like 10 notifications him changing the name every second so there's also that so I'm like what is going on yeah I did miss it so I will sorry oh I'll my plead God. the fifth there and say that I can't add that much because I don't say I was bored this episode uh, my two notes were uh, uh, that uh, I, I like Barrel Ghana, but he shouldn't be a main character and the Charger stuff I tune out all the time it's just not for me it's not an episode I'm not gonna I'm not gonna enjoy it so I just kind of tune out I know that I tried to watch it but I was super bored throughout all of it. And I, because also with this, I get it now that he dies, but I was like, why couldn't this be Polo Koon? Why couldn't this be somebody I know? 
I get now, but because it was this Jedi I've never met and had no context for, I didn't care about him at all. So, so the this end is of that thumbs down episode. For the me. end of the episode. This is one of the most like one of the most praised Clone Wars episodes for Star Wars fans. I'd say out there, like legit with, <laughs> really? with the Jedi Master, and then basically knowing that there's no escape for them. The droid army is coming, and they let the Twi'leks escape. So basically, what happens is. They do a standoff in this tiny little um, um, cap, like ravine area, uh, like a uh, embankment or whatever, and the droids are coming, and uh, uh, one by one the clone troopers keep getting executed in battle, like getting shot at and they die, and then it's just the commander and the Jedi left, and the commander gets shot and just the Jedi left, he looks at his commander and then he goes in and he's force, using force moves, he's taking on the droids one by one, and then he sees the commander uh, was injured but gets back up and jumps in and he's... And then the Jedi looks at him and says, like, this is our final moments, or, like, like I, I'm i proud to serve by you in these final moments. And Does they, the Jedi more like, a middle of the episode, though? No, this is at the end. And, like, so they both fight, and they I'm both rewatch they both end up getting executed. The Jedi gets shot in the back and dies. Like, it's so brutal, but there's uh, this nine, one nine scene. Style. The score kicks in. The score is fantastic in this episode. And just when you see the Jedi, this is what I use for the thumbnail. It's like a slow motion scene and the score starts to settle and slow down. And he's just, it hones in on the Jedi standing there. And then you see literally a whole armada of Separatist ships just settling in in front of him and the droid army advancing. It's so well done. Absolutely fantastic. And you feel for this Jedi because the Republic told him that we're going to get you supplies, we're going to help you. And he had to tell the Twi'leks, like, I'm sorry, but the supplies aren't coming. Yeah. No, 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 no. You gotta, I gotta, you gotta, you gotta do this, do this. Let's... No, no, keep talking, this is a podcast. I'll Let's talk, I'll talk. Guy. So yeah, literally the whole scene <laughs> is just, he's, he's you know fighting and trying. Oh, it's such a good scene. So, um, honestly, I think you should pause the podcast so you can hear the volume, because you need the score and everything in this. Oh, I, I, I believe you. Uh, yeah, so I'll pause that for now. No, I don't remember at all, so... Oh, my I'm God. I'm gonna chalk that up to my sick, tr- my sick trance this week and not, uh, remembering that much. So, yeah, sorry, no, I do not, so... Oh! Maybe I'll have to, I, I will rewatch, you know, I will get back to you. I promise you, I will rewatch this and I'll talk about it next episode because I feel bad for that. So, I'm sorry, I guess just the bail stuff made me check out and the JJ's... The J... The JJ stuff. Is JJ. You, can, Jar- you can skip that, Jar- all that stuff, and just watch the segments. Oh, I with- plan to. I'm not going to be watching this <laughs> shit, bag. I think the, you like the episode for one moment, but I think the episode overall is not that great. So, yeah, thumbs down for me. This is easy. Two thumbs up for me. But like I said, I feel like you just literally... How can it be a two thumbs up? You could say that scene is two thumbs up. For you to literally say you can skip that all the other stuff, just watch the scene... For you to say that to me shows that it's not a two thumbs up. Let me let me explain to you like this. So I have a full cup of water. Oh, no. I drink half no. of the water, and it was really really bad, gross water. I didn't like. It. I thought this tastes like shit. So what I do is I take, uh, I take a burrito filter and I fill it a burrito. <laughs> burrito. I'm bringing burita. some water here. I take my. Oh, cut off. <laughs> I take like that my cup? filter water. I pour it into my cup on top of the shitty water and it fills back up and it starts overflowing. I'm overflowed it because it's so much good water in there. I drink it, it's so good and it just overflows and makes me give two thumbs up as opposed to the thumbs down from the shitty water. But if someone were to say, hey, rank that first glass of water, it would not be good, right? So that's still incorporated in the glass of water. Yeah, but then and when the I get to restaurant the, experience. When, yeah, but if that food is so good, I'll overlook that water. And you get that dessert too on top of that. Be like, oh, this Trader. chef is buttering me up, you know. Sphere of the influence, Chairman Papa Nanadoes, whatever. <laughs> yeah, okay. What is his name? There's no way that's his name. Papa Anadoids. Papa. Papa Anadoids. <laughs> Papa Anoids. <laughs> Papa Anoidas. Do you know what it is? I don't know what this name is. I don't know who you're talking about. <laughs> He's a blue fucking alien. Chairman. This is uh, which episode? Sphere of the influence. Papanalda. What you just add an L in there? There's an L. That's an L, right? That's an I. No, it's not an I. Um, Papanoida. Okay. Whatever. I'm calling Papa. <laughs> Papa's family is kidnapped and held for ransom. Ahsoka must team up with Senator from uh, Pandora. No, Pat- Patnora. 
and Ryo Chu <laughs> Chuchia. <laughs> to <laughs> aid the new, I hate this. <laughs> the new chairman recovering his family before the Trade Federation can uh, unduly influence the future of his planet. Um, this was a boring episode until the reveal happened. <laughs> Why are you laughing? I'm not gonna lie. I don't remember the fucking <laughs> see, thing. See, of how this <laughs> we've lost half of our little viewers in this <laughs> today, folks. We apologize. This is the episode oh. with the blue alien family. They have Seth Green is in this episode voicing his son, and then his dogs get kidnapped. Greedos in it. <laughs> Greedo's girlfriend's in it. They go Jabba's in this episode. I gotta rewatch this episode. Oh my god. So what happens is so I'll give the quick rundown. So clearly Taylor's no use to us here. <laughs> We're just doing great. So it's his family. There his daughters get kidnapped. His son is played by Seth Green. More of my cons where I didn't like that. Lost the episode centered around them and then Ahsoka teaming up with his other chairman from their planet. I don't think it was their family. I I can't remember. But it was centered around a lot of characters I didn't really know. Ahsoka, I'm warming up to. But it was like a lot of characters that I don't care about because I'm meeting them for the first time. Um, the first half of the episode is just very boring. It's very by the numbers. And then it's revealed that uh, you miss it. Your favorite inspector was back. Oh, yeah, he is. And you don't even remember. I know. <laughs> and then Seth Green's character is like, what a doofus that guy is. Or he's like, how useless is he? So I'm like, oh, well, he said something I, uh, you know, I respect. So then... They investigate the crime scene. They're like, oh, there's blood on this thing. The police didn't find the blood. They scan it, and it goes back to Greedo. So Greedo apparently kidnapped these two girls for some deal with the uh, uh, new gun ray. He made some deal. They took them to Tatooine. So one of it was like Greedo, and then five, two minutes later, it was like, oh, we're going to Tatooine. I was stoked. And then they're going to Jabba. I'm like, this is awesome. Everything was going good. You had to go to Moss Eisley. I can't believe you don't remember this at all. There's a big shoot at Moss Eisley. The guy's trying to get their daughter back. Greedo's voice was weird, and he was speaking English. We also met a girlfriend of his, which was a Twi'lek, and I'm mad you didn't watch that episode because I wanted to talk about that was Han Solo, the one uh, that Han Solo slept with, because there's a book apparently where Han Solo like, stole Greedo's girlfriend, and this is Greedo's girlfriend. So You're I'm not gonna... making up half of this stuff? Watch it. I don't it's know why there. I can't remember. It, it, it's there. Oh, it, see, this is my tradition I watched them weeks ago, but then again, I don't remember that guy dying, so I can't say anything this episode. Uh, but, uh, yeah, and I, I could see Han Solo still in because, like, I gotta say something, fans would all know it, let's just get out in the open, Twilight's, they're fucking hot, you know, there's something about them, you know, they just, oh yeah, yeah, they, just the way they talk, the way they move, I don't know what I could do with those little big ear things, but I'd find, oh, I'd find something to I do. I mean, I would like hair, I'm more of like a Gamora fan than I am a I, Twilight fan. I, I, I don't say one or the other, I'm just saying Twilight, you know, doing great things. Um... <laughs> Uh, and then, yeah, they find out, they go to Java, and they go, either you put Greedo up to do this, and then we can talk about it, or Greedo's doing this on his own, and we want to know, because they get, like, this standstill of guns, and he's like, what are we going to do? He's like, let's bring Java into this. They get the daughters back, Ahsoka saves one of the daughters, and that was about it. It was kind of like a nothing, it was a filler episode, but it was a filler episode that had some fun stuff. I, Ahsoka gets a lot of filler episodes where she's just losing lightsabers or losing people left, right, and center, but, uh. This would be a thumbs up for me, yeah. <laughs> Taylor. I'll give it a thumbs up. You sold me. I'm going to go and rewatch this episode. <laughs> uh, Taylor, where can they find this episode so we uh, half of us can watch and half of us can? You can find it on Netflix. They have all no, six seasons. No, I mean, where can you <laughs> For our podcast. Oh, you can find it on the interwebs, ladies and gentlemen, in the search bar, Geek for Space Podcast on uh, Patreon right now because this episode is not out publicly, but well, it could be, when, it could be when you're listening to it. Who <laughs> knows? You know, maybe you're listening to it early, maybe you're not. Either way, you're listening to it, and that's what we want. That is great. So, you know, be sure to check out all the other stuff. We got season one and season two all finished and wrapped up, so make sure you listen to that before you get to here or just dive in right now. Why not? Um, but yeah, lots of us. If you want more Star Wars stuff, Star Wars Cantina Conversations that's one of our fantastic debating podcasts. Yeah. And, uh, oh, yeah. May the force be with you. Always.